Kelly Wynn with SBAC, and we're here today with Keith Latour with Sandfly Barbecue. Nicole Schwage. And I'm Adriana McDermott. And we own Bridal Boutique Ivory and Bow. I'm Kelly Wynn, and I'm here with Mr. Taswell at Be Smooth Barbershop. Hi, uh, my name is Tony Wiggins. I am a partner with Coastal Consulting Management Group, CCMG, here in Savannah, Georgia. I'm Finn. And I'm Rebecca Radovich of Lulu's Chocolate Bar. My name is Gilbert Straub. I'm the operating partner for Bojangles in the greater Savannah area. I'm Dr. J.A. Parker, owner of Envision Eye Care. When you were preparing to open your business, what was the one thing that you completely missed that came out of the blue that you had to deal with? I would say it would be the uh, staffing of the restaurant, especially with two locations. Um, you know, an opening, the second location, we had all the staffing in place, but with the restaurant, you have a pretty quick turnover, especially after opening. And uh, it was much more of a challenge refilling those positions. Uh, than I was expecting. I think one thing we kind of overlooked was inventory. Um, we kind of started out with not nearly as many dresses as we realized we need to fill the store. And also just thinking about styles and trends and what Savannah brides want. Sometimes you think that they want something and then you realize it doesn't sell as well. So just a lot of learning curves. The lack of finding good quality help, the consistentness of having well, in, in barbering, sometimes it's hard to find good barbers that's dedicated to the craft that's going to be here on time, that's serious about their profession. So maybe for my first three years, I was in the shop by myself. So that was that was a big challenge. I, I didn't anticipate that. Uh, one thing that we completely missed, I guess, was properly defining our business. We tell... Uh, new clients that we're not a CPA firm even though we're all CPAs and why, by explaining that is that uh, we don't let the 15th drive us. Uh, the 15th is just another day and it should be another day for all businesses and uh, you know that's for any businesses when you go into business you know exactly what you're doing but being able to explain it to a, customer, a client or a future customer uh, was something that uh, was uh, we found was a, a challenge, and we continue to help uh, you know, help us succeed. Well, Rebecca and I were really good friends at the time that we started this business, and we just expected to agree on everything and for everything to be smooth sailing <laughs> all the time, and that was not the case. <laughs> no, and the funny thing is we really only just agreed about the little things, so all the big stuff was no problem, but when it came down to bar stools and spoons and plates, <laughs> we had to, oh no, we are not putting that in our bar, so. <laughs> and we had decided right from the get-go, like we both had to be happy. Otherwise, we just had to keep going and you know, move on and make different decisions. So, four, six sets of bar stools later, <laughs> we had to we had to keep going until we both agreed, and that's pretty much how we run our business to this day. Uh, we both need to be happy. We both need to agree before we move forward with the decision. I didn't realize how many different regulations and how many different areas of the municipal governments I had to deal with. That really surprised me. I think one thing that we had not expected um, was cost overruns to uh, the nth degree. Uh, it, it just seemed like it was never ending. Um, some things we did anticipate in the construction and the startup of business, but some things I think were totally unexpected. Uh, for example, there was a pipe that we ended up having to pay $10,000 to the uh, city to have put down um, because of some things that were going on uh, in the construction process and phasing out uh, changing Montgomery Crossroad to a two-lane highway and just at the time we were building our business uh, we got kind of got caught up into that so definitely some unexpected costs were at the top of the list. As you are planning your day each morning what is your biggest challenge or worry that you face on a consistent basis? Uh, I would say, uh, again, with opening a second location, it would be just the consistency in, in the two locations, uh, trying to get to a point where we're serving the same product exactly the same way every time in both places, uh, and I kind of go back and forth each day to each location, checking on that. So it's really the first thing I think about in the morning is, is are things being done the same in both places? I think one thing we're always working on is how to get the next bride. With brides, it's a one-time purchase. It's not a recurring customer. 
So we're always wondering and working through the challenge of figuring out what advertising outlets and where to put our money to get the biggest return on investment. Is there it's, it's hard to say. I don't. I try not to worry because I try to. I try to go by faith, and I believe that this is what I'm supposed to do. And I, I always feel like my problem's going to work out, and I'll be able to find a solution because I made up my mind in the beginning of whatever I needed to do to make this business successful. I was going to do. So I try not to. I try to stay away from the fear area, but but it does come in. I you know sometimes financially and economically things get tight, but. I always find a way to get through it. Uh, the biggest challenge each day is that, um, am I gonna have the right answer for everything? In which we always know that we're not gonna have the right answer for everything, uh, but there's always sp uh, specific industries or a, um, a, a question that a client's gonna pose to you and they expect you to know it and to know it right away and to tell someone, Give me a give me a day or give me a few hours. Let me make sure that I have I can give you the correct guidance. Guidance here is the challenge because as a accountant or CPA or a trusted advisor, you too want to know, make sure that you have all the right answers, and you expect you do, and your client expects you do too, especially when you're uh, the trusted advisor for them. What's gonna be broken when we get to, <laughs> when we get to work? What are we gonna to have to try and fix? Yeah. Because you definitely have to learn a lot about your equipment and how to fix it and how to run it so that you can troubleshoot and fix things when problems come up. I've been told by my our air conditioning repair people that they would hire me <laughs> <laughs> because of my troubleshooting techniques. But from the POS to your plumbing, to bakery cases, air conditioning units, I mean, it just, you really need to be hands-on, especially in the restaurant business. Okay, great. Every day uh, I worry that uh, uh, my employees, my, my staff are executing the way that, uh, that I want and that we're delivering the, the correct customer service. Uh, I know if we lose one customer today, we'll lose them for the future. Okay. Uh, uh, consistently, I dread hearing my telephone ring before 8.30 in the morning because normally, or getting a text message nowadays, normally that's uh, somebody from work calling saying that they're not coming in or they're going to be late or something happened, the, the dog died, the cat got lost or something. It's just always something that's unexpected if the phone rings at time of the morning. Is there anything personally gratifying about having your own business that you had not expected? Yeah, I guess it'd be uh, some of the freedom that comes along with it. I, I know a lot of people say, and it's true, that when you own your own business, you work even harder than you do uh, when you're working for someone else because uh, you're constantly on the clock. Uh, it never goes away, but you do have the freedom to step away, to spend time, to go to your kids' soccer games or um, uh, maybe take a weekend for yourself if you if you want. Uh, so there is a certain amount of freedom there that uh, wasn't quite expecting, uh, but you kind of got to make it happen. I think just getting to know all of the brides, we've both worked in bridal before, but I feel like sometimes you just kind of do sales and don't think about it. But when you're not only selling them the dress, but you're ordering it and you're with them every step of the way, you get really close and connected to them. And then when they get married, it's kind of sad seeing them go and go off and get married. <laughs> I didn't realize the impact that we have on other people, the community. I didn't realize the p p position that people see me in. You know, I didn't realize that I, I have a bigger responsibility than I thought just from being a business owner. People really look to you for advice, you know, your inspiration. So it made me really have to look at what I'm doing and really do it to the best that I can because I, I didn't realize how people really look towards, towards you know, what we're doing in the business community. So it made me really get real serious and want to really project a real good, strong business for the community. I did not expect it. Um, the personal gratification is that uh, you know, each morning I wake up and it is, I have a client that I've established a relationship with and 
you know, when you worked for someone, and I've worked for a lot of very smart people that have that have taken bits of what they did and and what I think a, my business should be like, and um, I realized that you know, gaining that trust, and then from that trust comes relationships. Um, yes, in relationships comes um, a profitability portion of it, but the fact that you have someone that uh, it, it, that trust you and that a client trusts you and and it is it, it's personal it's it's gratifying to know that what you do um, can have an impact and your decisions have an impact how happy do we make everybody like we, <laughs> we were excited to start our business it made us happy and it, but it turns out it's really fun to have a business that makes people so happy and for them to get so excited when they come in here both when they come in here and when we meet people out and about and they're like, oh, you own Lulu's and they go, go ahead and tell us what their favorite dessert is and their favorite drink and um, it's just, yeah, it's very gratifying. Uh, not everybody in the world gets to say that they make people happy for a living and we do. Uh, I think uh, what's made me feel uh, even better than I anticipated was when uh, employees come back after they've worked with me for a while and they've moved on to either a different career or uh, they've done something else in life and they come back and uh, they're appreciative for what they've learned while they uh, worked with me at Bojangles. Okay, excellent. So many things were totally gratifying. Uh, the autonomy, the independence of being my own, um, my own boss, of course. Um, but from the perspective of, you know, that I did not expect uh, those things that are most gratifying, I think, is when I'm in the public eye and, and patients see me and uh, or I think most importantly, I walk in the exam room and patients are pleasantly surprised and I get the look on their face like, wow, an African-American female I wasn't expecting because they see the Dr. J.A. Parker, and they're really not knowing what to anticipate when I open the door. So oftentimes I'll get a, a double take, which is a positive thing. I think that's totally unexpected, but I am certainly appreciative.